Hi all, my name is Rebecca Ellis and I am zooming in to present to you today from Auckland, New Zealand. Uh, and I would like to share with you a case presentation using Geishlik Fibro Guide for soft tissue augmentation uh, in the aesthetic zone with a simultaneous implant placement. Thank you to Geishlik for inviting me to be part of the Geishlik and New YouTube series and hopefully this is something that you'll all enjoy today. A little bit about myself, I undertook my dental training at the University of Otago before jumping across the ditch to join the team at Melbourne for my specialist training in periodontics. I've been very actively involved in research in implant placement and in bone grafting aspects. However, I'm very much a clinician at heart and am practicing in full-time private practice in Auckland, New Zealand at the Institute of Dental Implants and Periodontics. So let's get started. I would like to share with you today a case uh, of Mrs. JW, who was referred in by her general dentist for implant placement at the 1-2 site uh, on the upper right lateral incisor site. You can see here that at the time of presentation, there has been sufficient soft tissue healing uh, and the patient was approximately eight weeks post extraction. At the time of extraction with her general dentist, no augmentation procedures of any kind have been undertaken. Um, and the tooth was removed due to a reinfection of a previous root canal treatment. You can, however, see that although there is complete uh, socket healing at the site clinically, uh, there is a collapse of that buccal profile in both the soft and hard tissue aspect, which we so commonly see in the anterior aesthetic zone. The patient was presenting with a small, simple valplast removable prosthesis for tooth replacement as a provisional option. Here we can see just highlighted that deficiency in the buccal profile. Now, the general dentist was kind enough to send through the CBCT scan that had been taken prior to extraction of the tooth, uh, which demonstrates a um, nice preservation of that buccal ridge, which unfortunately in the anesthetic zone we know so often cannot be the case. So with this in mind, I felt confident that provided the dentist had removed the tooth in an atraumatic manner, uh, we would be able to proceed forward with conventional implant placement, given the bony dimensions at the site. A conventional PA was taken just to ensure that there was no residual pathology following this eight weeks of healing. So with any treatment plan, it's always prudent to make sure you're on side with your patient. So we discussed a number of options for the patient, including alternatives such as a permanent removal prosthesis, a fixed dental prosthesis, either via a cantilever approach from the already restored central incisor, uh, or a conventional three unit bridge from the central incisor to the canine site. However, both myself and the patient found that a single implant at the one, two site would be the preferred treatment option in this case to facilitate a uh, screw-retained screw implant supported crown. As with any case in the anterior aesthetic zone, there's always the anticipation that some form of simultaneous guided bone regeneration will be required. And as a periodontist, I'm so often considering the needs of the soft tissues as well as part of my ultimate treatment plan for the patient. Regarding the soft tissue augmentation aspect of treatment, this is something that I'm readily incorporating into most of my aesthetic cases. Really to optimize the long-term aesthetic outcome for the patient and to allow for a result which is gonna be as optimal and as tooth-like as possible. So it's really augmenting and maintaining that sort of pink appearance as well as the white appearance, which we will restore with the prosthetic tooth in the long run. So we have a number of options to consider when it comes to simultaneous soft tissue augmentation. These include our autogenous options, such as a subepithelial connective tissue graft or substitute materials, including allografts or xenografts. We'll all hopefully be familiar with the use of a connective tissue graft for uh, soft tissue augmentation at teeth sites. And subsequently, this has been transitioned very successfully into application around implants as well. So Langer and Langer in 1985 initially um, introduced this concept of a subepithelial connective tissue graft to be used for root surface coverage at teeth sites. Um, and we can see very successfully that this has transitioned into uh, demonstrating significant soft tissue increase in thickness around implant sites as well. Now this approach can be taken preemptively, so as a separate staged procedure prior to implant placement. 
simultaneously with implant placement. Um, and in some instances, it can be used as a corrective procedure postoperatively to correct discrepancies with implant um, exposure of the abutment, et cetera. Now, unfortunately, as most of you are familiar with, harvesting a connective tissue graft does uh, require an additional second procedure. And this can be something that patients don't find particularly attractive. Usually when you talk about taking a piece of tissue from the roof of their mouth. So from our perspective, I am seeing that patients are shifting away from um, the autogenous grafting and where possible requiring and seeking the alternative of um, substitute materials. It is encouraging to see that the allograft and xenograft materials available are demonstrating increased sort of increased, um, sorry, similar comparative uh, tissue thicknesses and predictable healing results compared to our soft tissue graft materials also. So we have a couple of studies looking at the Geischlich Fibro Guide substitute material, which is a xenograft, compared to our gold standard connective tissue graft. And randomized control trials are fortunately showing, as we would expect, a perception and least morbidity when using the Geischlich Fibro Guide substitute material. Similar studies are showing um, a similarity in terms of buccal mucosal thickening, which is encouraging from a clinical standpoint. And subsequently, this is translating into stable peri-implant soft tissue dimensions as well. So as a result, it can be considered that Geischlich Fibro Guide can be used as a substitute or an alternative to connective tissue grafting for soft tissue augmentation with implant placement. So let's get back into Mrs. JW's case series. You can see here upon flap elevation that there is still a um, remnants of bony healing at the side. And you can see that collapse in the buccal profile as well. Conventional implant placement was undertaken and the osteotomy was prepared to place a Strauman narrow cross fit implant, uh, which, with, which demonstrated good primary stability at the time of insertion. Subsequently, guided bone regeneration was undertaken to augment the buccal bone surrounding the implant site. And then we looked at placing a healing abutment for transmucosal healing and then moved on to the soft tissue augmentation stage of treatment. This is where we use the Geischlich Fibro Guide material. And you can see that this material is initially quite thick in terms of its dimensions. It's actually six millimeters in thickness. So you can see here that I have prepared this before placement with a surgical scalpel and I've essentially thinned the material. This is something you need to take into consideration because at the time of placement, it's really optimal that primary, um, sorry, primary closure is obtained around the graft material. And we all know that advancing a flap over a significant um, augmentation site can be a challenge. So it's something we just need to factor in before we're looking at placing the material. A couple of factors about the Geischlich Fibro Guide is it has a excellent wettability and it will absorb any surrounding moisture and blood uh, very rapidly up to sort of 28, 30 seconds. So a very rapid absorption rate. Once the material absorbs any moisture in the region, it will demonstrate an increased volume um, size as well, expansion. And this can be up to 25%. So that's really where we're factoring this into the equation when we're tr initially trimming that material prior to placement. You can see once the material has been shaped and placed according to the defect, it's very quickly absorbing that moisture, which we can see here, and then that blood as well. This is within seconds of placement makes it more easy to handle if it is placed dry, which you can see we've done here in the initial stages. Um, and you can see that excellent um, increased volume stability um, that the material is demonstrating for us here. With that in mind, we have to remember that had we used that initial six millimeters of thickness of material, and if it was expanding up to 25%, that would take us up to seven and a half millimeters of thickness. And even as a periodontist, advancing a flap over that um, much sort of increased tissue gain, particularly in the aesthetic zone, can be a challenge. So it's just important that we're equating and considering that in our use of the material and making sure we allow for, first of all, primary closure and second of all, tension-free closure at the site. I love this photo because it really shows how rapidly the material expands and how rapidly it absorbs that surrounding moisture and blood as well. 
So you can see here immediately postoperatively that we have achieved tension-free closure. We have an excellent buccal um, thickness on the profile. Yeah, and even compared to the contralateral site where there is a autogenous tooth in position. Now, immediately postoperatively, if the patient is wearing any interim prosthesis, it is of paramount importance that this is compensated for. Unfortunately, any pressure on the soft tissue um, while it's healing can cause shrinkage um, and compression of the sigh, and we want to leave that well alone. Unfortunately, as you'll recall, the patient presented with a simple valpass prosthesis, which we know is a tissue-borne prosthesis. As a periodontist, I don't love these, and I would usually recommend and request where possible a tooth-borne prosthesis as a provisional um, option when we're talking about any augmentation um, and implant placement procedures. You can see I've very crudely adjusted the margin, so there's no longer any pressure on that buccal profile, and there's no pressure on the implant also. The patient returns two weeks postoperatively for a suture removal appointment. You can see that excellent preservation of the site as well. At this time, we add the Geisler Fibroguard material is in its proliferation phase. Its proliferation phase is allowing for um, optimal cell ingrowth and blood clot stabilization to the site. I routinely, for any soft tissue augmentation, would follow up with a six week healing check. And at this time, we can see a persistence of that sort of volume stability in the area and excellent preservation of the pillar as well. At this stage, we're in a remodeling phase. And this is where we're seeing slow um, deposition of the soft tissue into the graft material and replacement of that graft material with autogenous tissue. Three months postoperatively, the patient returns for the integration check of the implant and also impression checks as well. And you can see again at this time, we have that sort of excellent stability of the soft tissue profile on the buccal aspect um, and, um, and great matur maturation of the tissues in the area as well. At this point in time, we've taken an intraoral scan for you just to really highlight that volume stability and that increase in dimensions. I quite like using this because it shows you in three dimensions that stability and that thickness, um, which again we will see in the occlusal view shortly. The other thing that I really like in this case is it's showing how beautifully we've been able to augment that site compared to even the contralateral where we have a natural, um, a natural tooth in position as well. So I feel very comfortable with these soft tissues after three months that we'll be able to um, manipulate these uh, for the final restoration phase. Here we have immediately post insertion of the direct fixture crown uh, at the site. Uh, you can see there is some blanching of the soft tissues and a slight irritation at the site. However, this very quickly settles and resolves. Um, and you can see again at this point in time, we've still been able to see an excellent preservation of those tissues. So following the sequence through, you can see that the Geisler Fibro Guide is allowed for excellent soft tissue stability and augmentation in that acidic zone with simultaneous implant placement. So ultimately at this point in time we can conclude that the Geisler Fibro Guide material can be indicated for simultaneous soft tissue augmentation with implant placement in the acidic zone as a substitute for our conventional approaches such as connective tissue grafts. From a patient perspective, it's great to see, and as we expected from the literature, that there is a perception of reduced morbidity without the need for an additional procedure to harvest that connective tissue graft from the palate, reduced healing, and reduced surgical time for the patient as well. Ultimately, we can see that this material allows for an excellent increase in soft tissue dimensions and subsequently allows for a stable peri implant buccal mucosal profile. Thank you for letting me share that case with you today. Hopefully you are all staying well during this trying time and I look forward to catching up with you at a conference or Congress face-to-face -face soon. Uh, take care for now. And once again, a special thanks to Guy Schlick for having me be involved.